Alright, now, I would have been tragic. Alright, doing a sound check here to see, uh, to see if this works. Stand over here. Can you hear anything? I don't hear any sound. Should be coming out of this computer. How about now? Do we hear anything now? Having some technical difficulties. We'll try to work through these here. Oh, I bet it's because this computer is again, I'm gonna let's just attach that for a minute. Alright, just attach that, attach that for a minute. I think the sound is working. Alright, just attach that, attach So I think this is working, the coach's corner. Um, if anybody's live and on the chat, uh, let us know how the audio is working. Uh, but I think we're in pretty good shape here. Uh, in today's episode, we're bringing in uh, Coach Capone out of Portland High School, formerly of Bates College, and, and a longtime Lewiston High School football coach as well. Uh, excited to uh, have Coach on board and talk a little bit of special teams today. So, Coach, you're on. Afternoon, fellas. Really glad to be here. I'm uh, really excited to share some of the things that I've learned over uh, many years of coaching this great game. I'm not quite as sexy and uh, as uh, uh, up to date and knowledgeable as Coach Hathaway and some of the other young guys, but I'm going to do what I can to, to share and, and try to give you some, some, some thoughts on special teams. And um, yeah, it's been just been really happy to be here. It's, it means a lot to have, have an opportunity to talk, and uh, I want to thank uh, some of the guys I coached with at Bates when I was the, off the deep, uh, special teams coordinator there. Had a pretty special relationship with Chris Kempton, Daryl Weiss. Um, the three of us really worked together uh, to develop um, uh, a real, a, obviously a, a real good program. Uh, we I went through a stretch where we were probably, record-wise, probably as good as we've ever been at Bates College, and the reason we worked well together, and special teams was a big part of that. I think uh, our relationship allowed that to develop, and I'm just going to share some things that I've learned over the years. Uh, a little bit about my background, as, as Mike mentioned, started at Dover High School, coached at my alma mater, Plymouth State, coached in the D-line, went to Southwest Missouri State doing the same thing, coordinating the front. I had a chance to go to Winnicott High School in New Hampshire for three years as an assistant, and then came to Lewiston and was uh, very, happy, very blessed to work with some great kids and some great coaches, and then had the opportunity to work with Mark Harriman from um, over 20 years at, at, at Bates, and uh, really, it's, it's been pretty, pretty special. So, really excited to share some things with you guys. Uh, Mike's going to put up the, my PowerPoint. If you guys are looking for schemes today, that's really not what I'm all about today. Uh, going to talk more uh, organization, how to get the most out of your practice time, how to most out of your drills, and those types of things. Uh, if you want schematics, if you want kickoff return, uh, punt return, those kinds of things, feel free to reach out to me. I'll put my, my email up. Uh, later on, I may end up doing another another one of these and talk about specific special teams. But today, it's more just organization, thought process, kind of food for thought. Some things you might want to think about as you install your special teams. And if Mike would put up my PowerPoint on my list, I'll go from there. Uh, just talk about a few things again. How to make special teams special? Organization, I think, is really really critical. Uh, I know all you guys, head coach or assistants, you have. Uh, installation schedules and those kinds of things for your offense and your defense and I'm going to hopefully show you a, 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 a form a little bit later show some of the things that I did at Bates uh, but I think you have to be just as organized on special teams uh, I always made sure that I had a depth chart posted every day in the locker room whether I was at Lewiston or at Bates for not only the kids that we knew what special teams we were working on guys knew where they were supposed to be but also for, our, for, for the scout teams. So guys knew exactly 
what we were going to be doing, what they were going to be doing. I think that saves you a lot of time. I think one of the things we, we, we all have is, is a similar amount of time, and I think you need to be able to squeeze as much out of every practice as you possibly can, in particular in the area of um, of special teams, we also scripted every every special teams period. So if we were working punt, punt return, didn't really matter. We scripted it all, no different than we did on offense and on defense. And I'm talking about doing this back in the early eight, mid eighties. Okay, where you know, so I know a lot of you guys script that stuff now. Back then it was a little bit of a novel concept, but we went ahead and scripted everything uh, in every phase of the game. I think it saved us some time. Coaches knew what was going to happen. Kids knew what was going to happen. I thought that was very, 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 very uh, important. Uh, again, wasted time will kill you. The thing that, that drives me crazy is trying to organize special teams or organize any phase. They kids walking around, coaches walking around, not really knowing what the hell is going on. I think if you have it scripted, you have it organized, you go through your practice plan, you know, prior to practice. And again, today, you know, we were able to do it back, you know, way back when I was at Lewiston, basically on the telephone. Those guys are now with, with cell phones, you know, uh, all, direct messaging on Twitter, whatever it is. There's no excuse not to come to practice completely organized and have a, a really good flow. So you can go right from one period to another without wasting time. And I think in particular in the area, especially when you're trying to coordinate a scout team, that, you, again, you have to, I think that's really important. You have, kids know what they, you know. These 15 kids are going to be on the scout punt team, and they're able to rotate through. So as they're getting organized, it just saves you an awful lot of time. Uh, again, there are a lot of moving parts in special teams. you got kids doing some things that they're not really used to doing. So, again, it's really important that you're organized, go from there, asking kids to, to perform, again, skills that they're not usually, uh, usually doing. Uh, you need to be prepared for injuries. Okay, you need, you know, even though, you know, from one day to the next, you know, your special teams charts can, go, can really go crazy. One of the things we really like to do when I was at Bates was between Daryl, myself, and Chris, was really look at individual reps for every single player. Again, it's a cumulative effect over the year. If you've got kids that are playing, you know, 60 or 70 snaps on a Friday, they're on every special team, over a period of time, they're going to lose their legs. So we really try to really limit, again, we try to put our best players on special teams, but also try to use our head in terms of if there are certain guys that we need, we, if we get them off special, certain special teams, we would, knowing that in a pinch, we could put guys on a particular team. For example, Andrew Cookish, when I was played at base, was an All-American, honorable all, all, mention, All-American. He was a dude. Okay, he didn't belong in SCAC. He made me look really, really smart, okay, as, as most good players do. Uh, and Andrew was not on any special teams except when I needed him. Okay, he was, he was kind of like my assistant most days, help out. But if I needed to go on a punt team, if I needed him on a kickoff team in a critical moment of the game, I knew he was going to go out there and execute. Mark Upton was the same way. We'd have one, maybe one specialty. Okay, he, again, Mark was an all mentioned All-American linebacker, did some great things. Okay, so we're really, you've got to really be judicious as the season goes along in trying to keep your kids fresh. And I'll talk more about drills and things like that as we go. Uh, Again, other, other things, if, if talk, just like any situation offensively or defensively, don't ask kids to do something you have, you have not practiced during practice. For example, one big thing we like to do when I was at base, with, particularly with a punt team, was to keep the ball out of the end zone. You know, we were, and I'll talk about directional punting in a minute, but bottom line, we, we, we were punting on a short field. You know, the worst thing that can happen is you kick it from, your, from their 40-yard line, you kick it into the end zone. Now, now you kick, now you got a 20-yard punt. We would literally would practice with certain members of our punt team, get putting the heels on the three-yard line, facing back where the punter was, and keep the ball out of the end zone. And probably eight or nine times during the, my tenure as a special teams coordinator at Bates, we kept the ball and down the ball inside the five-yard line. And that's really, again, big play. You know, Matt, you're the, the, you, we all know, and I'm not a huge statistics guy, but I do know that the, the longer an offense has to go, the less likely it is to score. You, get the, you start a drive inside the 20, and your chances of scoring a touchdown are way under 20%. So, again, that, 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 for us, that was a big play on, on special teams. But you got to get it all done during preseason. I, I, ironically, I, I saw Mike Landry on, 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 on one of the Lost Bowl telecasts they were showing the other night. And Mike and I, again, very competitive, but we shared an awful lot together. And one of the things that Mike told me, and, and I, I actually changed my preseason schedule, was that you need, if you're gonna, whatever you're gonna do, you need to get it done that first five days of practice. Because after that, 
It's not going to happen. So we, we would make sure when I, when I had my high school installation schedule from, from Monday through Friday, we got it all in. Now, we didn't, we didn't get necessarily get all the nuances in, but we had our, we had our basic punt, punt return, kickoff, kick return, and hands team all installed before that, but by the end of the day on that, on, that, on that first Friday of preseason. And after that, we just worked on it from there. At Bates, we had a little bit more time. Okay, we, we had probably eight or nine days, but as you go through the installation schedule, you will see that uh, we, we went through every single scenario on special teams. You know, from just normal punt, blue punt, which would be punting from the 40-yard line in, backed up, we called it rhino punt, we were from the five-yard line in. Again, it's a whole different mindset. We practiced all those things, and we got it all in during preseason. We got our hands team installed during preseason. How we were going to get lined up. We, got, we practiced onside kick, all our fakes, all, all that stuff was done within the first seven or eight days of practice. And again, we were only practicing once a day. Okay, so again, so it all, it all kind of evens out. So that's important. Uh, again, I know all you, all you offensive gurus, you're, you're, you're always sending your quarterbacks home with footballs. Okay, expect them to go out and throw and catch, uh, play pass. I think you're going to do the same thing with, with, your, uh, with your specials. I always, when I was at Lewiston, every one of my punters, every one of my place kickers had a couple of footballs. I'd find some old ratty balls and let, let them work on that all summer long. Okay, you need to be able to identify specialists. You, you do it on offense and defense, you got to do the same thing on special teams. Really, really important. Okay, we, we really took pride in developing multiple kids that could kick, multiple kids that could punt, multiple kids that could long snap. Okay, I think that that's something you can identify, obviously, with, with your, with your uh, youth coaches as they're coming up, you know, and have them identify guys. But at the same token, you, as you get kids as freshmen, you can, you, again, those really good athletes, you know, the baseball players, as far as the guys that be able to long snap, that's a, it's a similar motion. So being able to do that, okay? Remember, as you install your special teams, or you into, install your entire package, okay, your kids can only absorb and rep so many things. Okay, so I think as, as a head coach, you have to make some decisions. If you're going to be really, really complicated on offense, multiple formations. I looked to the left of me now, and Coach Hathaway's got like 8,000 things up here. That's like way more. Than, this is like me right here. That's about it back in the day. Okay, uh, you, then you, you need to understand that you're going to have to be somewhat simple in other areas. I know when I, again, the thing that we, we worked on at Bates a lot, and, and even at Lewiston, was we, we weren't going to be complicated on special teams. We were going to, our, if you ask me about our schematics, they were basic. But we just got better at it every single day. Every single day. It's all about fundamentals. Okay, talk about, uh, again, talk about just being, being fundamentally sound, doing those great things, again, work on ball skills in the summertime. One, one big period that, that I think you can get, you can make a lot of hay, and we called it our specialty period. And we, not, like when I was at Lewiston, we'd have our, our, our skilled guys go out before practice and kick around and throw and things like that. But we always had a 10-minute block, and it was the same way, same way at Bates, where we would work on, on those special teams specialties. Our old line, especially the college level, they weren't on, on any special teams. So they, they would go out and they would give the, the old line coach you know, 10 more minutes of indie time, the quarterback guys would be gone. But I use the remainder of, our, of the staff to work specialist work. So punters would punt. Long snappers would long snap. Place kickers would well, obviously kick PAT field goals into our kickoffs. And we'd have our returners all working. But I think one thing that, that, I, that we developed at Bates that I was really, really happy with, and it really helped us get better, we, we, as part of our specialist period, we had a bunch of guys that were on most of our special teams. And I called them our core, okay? And those, again, they, they, were, they, they were covered punts, they blocked the punts, kickoffs, those kinds of things. And we took ten, that 10-minute that block, and they worked fundamentals every single day based on what special teams we were going to be working on. For example, if we were going to work kickoff and kickoff return, we would work a blocking and space drill, take those guys, divide them in half. One young coach would take... Half that group would work a blocking in space, but they'd work a drop, they'd set their feet and they'd strike. We, in the other group, in the other side, we might either, either do an evasion drill or an open field tackling drill. Now these were all low, low impact, 
uh, not not a high intensity kind of a drill. We weren't trying to we weren't trying to blow out their legs. It was all about getting fundamentals. Get them used to doing it over and over again. Because you know the way. If you just take time during your special teams block, you've got 10 minutes. If you want to do some some team stuff, you want to run some returns. That doesn't leave you a whole lot of time for fundamentals. So if you think about it, every practice we're gonna we're gonna get 10 minutes of, of special teams. Individual work. You multiply that over the entire season, and you're going to get 60 or 70 practices. How good are your kids going to get when you when you put that all together? And it also gave me an opportunity as a coordinator to take a certain phase of the special teams and take pull them aside. Like always, Tuesday for me was always punt protection. I really feel the punt team is the most critical team you have. You're talking about changing field position. It's a unique group in terms of going from, you're going from an offensive team to a defensive team on one snap. All right? And I think protection, those kind of things are critical. And I would take extra time. So I would take those guys, the first two, two levels of, of the punt team, and I would work any, any fun, uh, fundamentals and or nuances that I felt we need to work on that particular day. If, for example, we were playing Williams, and then we knew they, they, they had a favorite block, then that's when we, I would, we would work specifically on that block. So it would work the man side of the protection and the zone side of the protection. So it gives, I was able to steal eight or nine or ten extra minutes, where, where, where rather than trying to do it just in a ten-minute block, it gave us that extra time, so we got better at it. And it really, it really, it really helped our kids. You know, we all we, we worked uh, during that specialty period. We also worked PAT field goal every single day. I know a lot of teams don't do it, but if you, if you, again, we all know how critical extra points and field goals are, in particular extra points. You know, you miss one of those, and now you now you're, you're behind, and it's it, it really kind of at, at, at the end of the game. We've been on both sides of it, but we made our extra points, and it made the end of the game a lot easier for us. And I've also been on the other end of it where you miss one, and now. You're having to go for two and all those kinds of things that you really not you really don't want to do. Use your entire staff. Yeah, I think number one, it's a great opportunity for young coaches to break in. I think it means a lot if the head coach is involved. I know when I was at Lewiston, I coordinated the special teams. A lot of guys don't do that, which is fine. Uh, but I would think you utilize your whole staff. I mean, you do it on usually you do it on offense and defense. Everybody's involved. Why is special teams any different? And it allows you to break those break a, a, a punt team down into four or five different parts. No different than an offensive defense. On offense, you got a running backs coach, you got a receivers coach, you got a line coach, you got a Q coach. Well, it should be the same way, and that way you can get smaller groups and, and you get more reps out of it. All right. Okay. Try to find a way to make it competitive during that specialist block. For example, you know, have our punters and our gunners work on keeping the ball out of the end zone. You know, so the gunner would, would release and, and, and work on that skill, okay? Have, uh, have the returners catching the ball with something else, like have the ball in their, in their left hand, have to catch it with their right hand, kind of an elimination kind of a thing. Yeah, maybe at the end, the winner gets a, a piece of candy. It doesn't really matter, but just kids like to compete, but not in a high-intensity drill situation, but just I mean, you make it fun. Fellas, football practice is tough. And if anybody tells you football practice is fun, Unless your coach is full of crap, okay? Haven't played the game for a long time. Football practice work. I mean, I love playing baseball. Go out and catch fly balls in the outfield, get a tan, you know, a little BP, that kind of stuff. Basketball, run around in shorts and shoot and all those kinds of things. But you know what I know, football's work, okay? Unless you're a quarterback. Then you just kind of hang around and check the ball around a little bit, okay? <clears throat> Again, use this period also, as I mentioned earlier, to develop your future. Don't ever go into a season Oh, who, who the hell's going to be our long snapper? Who's going to be our punter? You should have been, you should have identified that the previous year. If you're using especially block correctly, and those guys are getting coached up. Okay, you're developing those kids. Some, sometimes you, you may eliminate some kids. We the first day at base, we used to call it the Gong Show. Anybody, any, we knew who who some of the guys, but some guys we didn't know. You know, as in-depth you are in the recruiting process, you're not sure. And we actually identified some good punters, place kickers, and returners just during the gong show. 
Because we also eliminated a bunch of guys too. It's like, no, dude, you're done. You're not, you're, you, you just, you just hit, got hit in the face three times in the punt. You're done. Fired. But I mean, the kids, the kids, are real. But I get, you know, those kind of things, I think you need to be able to do. I really do. It's really important. Uh, but again, working on those guys, I think the core is really, really critical. I'll go through some of those drills in a little bit. We got a, a little bit of a core circuit, and I thought that I thought that was really beneficial for us. But again, schematically, we kept it really, really simple. I think you have to. You know, you want to just work on fundamentals, work on all those situations. You know, Coach Hathaway, I'm going to need some help. Let's see if I can do this. Let's see if I can do this. Right. Oh wow, I got it. Look at that. Oh, I'm so happy with myself. That's not what I want. I got the wrong one, though, Coach. Here we go. Good. No, that's not fun. I thought I gave you another one, Coach. Uh, which one are you looking for? Uh, just uh, just uh, the, the, the special teams manual. Special teams manual. Yeah, I thought I sent you that. I hope so. It might be, yeah. Uh... Sorry, guys. I have the screen. Kickoff return manual? No, one? no, just the, just the, just over general special teams. Maybe not. Not that, is it? Nope. Maybe I didn't. I uh, thought I sent it to you. Let me go to email. Sorry, fellas. Technical difficulties here. No, that's all. Blame it on Coach Capone. All right. Um, see one of those. Those are the four you sent okay. me. Psychic recruiting. Shit. No, I guess I didn't bring it. Okay, after size. Right. Go on. Okay, guys, just gonna just, I'll just continue to uh, talk about our, our special teams manual and some of the things that we uh, that we emphasize on special teams. I think as you as you have goals offensively and defensively, I think you have to have the same thing uh, on special teams. We talk about you know cr changing field position, uh, creating turnovers, uh, things such as forcing a bad kick, having returns out beyond the 35-yard line. Those types of things. Uh, never having a kick blocked. All those things I think are really, really important. A lot, and again, a lot of that comes down, quite frankly, having some good players. I was blessed when I was at base to coach. I'm not saying I coach, I taught him a whole lot, but two all conference punters and all, an all American place kicker. And I had uh, uh, skill guys in terms of long snappers that could snap. So that, again, operation time is critical. You need to work on that. You gotta put your kids on a watch all the time, put them, put them in a stressful situation. Anybody can get out there, it's like going out and shooting threes when there's nobody around you. Kids, you look, knock, knock them down all the time. But if there's someone close to you, running at you, whatever it is, now see how many you make. It's the same thing, you know, we, we, we would put our guys on, on the watch every single day. Well, during that specialist block, they had, you know, we knew they had to get the punt off and the snap off in a certain time. And I would also do that when I broke down special teams tape on Sunday, get our operation time. You know, there were a number of times, quite frankly, where our operation time was so good, that even though we had a, a minor breakdown in protection, we were still able to get the, we were still able to get the, the, the punt off. I think that's really the same thing with, with, with uh, extra points. So I guess I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, I am gonna go through uh, our kickoff return. That's okay, coach? Yeah, let me get that up on the on the screen there. Yep, baseball Again, back, special teams. Yeah. Right now I got just look at we call just called our lightning return. Basically we're, we're gonna have an attack mentality. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna our expectation is score every 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 return. Okay? And when I, we had we had the same philosophy when I was losing high school. We had I think in the 14 years out there, I think we had nine kickoff returns for touchdowns. We only had two returns when I was at Lewiston. We only had two returns when I was at Bates. Okay, and we had one kickoff return for a touchdown while I was there. But generally, even, and again, keep referring to Bates and some of the simple things that we're doing. Fellas, if you're familiar with the NESCAC, you know that our personnel at Bates, similar to Bowden Colby, is not quite the same as you see at Amherst, at Williams, in Trinity, and Wesley. Okay, because I loved our guys. They're great kids, and we had some really good players. Okay, so we had to make, you know, by emphasizing the fundamentals and getting out and keeping it simple, we were able to, for the most part, in the four or five years that I was a coordinator, 
we're able to, statistically, pretty much every category, we were in the top third of our league. Now, again, that has to do with the specialists that we had. We had a great punter, a great place kicker. Okay? We had great long snappers, which really helps. But we also were able to execute because our guys got better every single day. Okay? And, again, every, you know, every return, again, the more times you get the ball outside of 35, the better off you are. Again, field lock, again, really big, big thing I emphasize about returns all, all the time, catch the football. Okay, how many times, as you go back and look at tape, if you block the heck out of return and the returner drops the ball on the ground. Now, you might recover it and, and, and make some positive yardage, but nine times out of ten, it's not going to be the same. Okay? So it's really important that you work, again, that's part of that specialty block, that you put those kids in a stressful situation, make them catch the ball with someone in front of them, you know, distraction drills, those kind of things are critical. Again, no penalties. That was one, always one of our goals in all our special teams is our no penalties. Those goals will kill you in terms of field position. Okay, we want to try to get the ball inside the 35-yard line and go from there. Let's see if I can work how to use this here. Coach. Yeah, I might, might be able to put it right into a... Uh, you can do a little... Uh, let's close that for one. Here we go. And then... Uh, here we go. Yep. Okay, rules again. We all, we always. I think it's important. I know I didn't do this in my first three or four years at Lewiston. I guess I assumed the kids were going to know the rules. Okay, well, that's obviously not the case. Sometimes our coaches don't know the rules. Under, they should understand. And that d d during preseason is a great time. Take five minutes and go over the rules for every part of our initial meetings. And we went through it was to make sure our guys understood the rules on a kickoff return. Okay, the clock starts. Okay, he's got, got to travel 10 yards, okay? Do you know when it, where, where it's going to take off from? A kickoff, it, it's a live, you understand that once it goes 10 yards, it's a live ball. So once it's, it's rolling, rolling around, we talk about fair catch. Okay, they want, they want to use a pooch-style kick. Uh, the, our guys have got to know they have the ability to fair catch. That's another thing going back to the, to the you know, I'm going to kind of go back and forth as I go through this. Uh, but during that specialist block on Thursdays, we made sure that all any guy that was in the first or second level on our kickoff return caught the ball. We'd put him 15 or 20 yards away, have a coach or one of our extra kickers kick him a kick him a ground ball, pull, pooch it up in the air. Again, most of those guys are what they're tight ends. They might be reserved. You know, guys up front might be a smaller lineman. Guys that don't always handle the ball, and especially not in that situation. You know that ball's popped up in the air, and you know those 11 guys are coming to kick your butt. It's a little bit, you know, a little bit unnerving if you're not used to doing it. So we would make sure every Thursday to make sure our guys caught that. We do the same thing with our guys on our hands team that all get one or two reps. And we at the same time, obviously, we're working on our on our on our onside kick. You never know when that's when that kind of a situation is going to happen. Okay, you don't want to be caught with your hands down. So again, again, all those things as as you script out your week, it's important that you have a way of getting to to that. All those different scenarios as often as you can. And Thursdays for us was always a great day. It was a lighter day when I was at Bates. You know, a lot of times we were just in, just in helmets. And it was a good, again, relaxed time. Guys go out and catch the ball and do some things like that. But I think those kids, all those guys in the kickoff return team have got to handle the ball at some point. Don't expect them to, number one, oh, no, they can feel catch a pooch kick. Or understand, you know, if the ball doesn't go 10 yards, they don't have to touch it. Don't expect kids to know that. You have to go through those things and actually show them. And sometimes, so some guys, like some of the guys they had at Lewis, you got to show them more than once. And it's not a bad thing, but you got you got you need to be able to do that. Okay, again, free ball covering the end zone by kicking is a touchdown. Obviously, a little bit that's a little bit different in high school. Obviously, once the ball goes into into the end zone, okay, it's it's a touchback, and they need kids need to understand that if it glances off them, and the momentum of the ball takes them in the end zone. Then it's, the, the referee's going to blow the whistle. But again, if, if, if not, they need to understand you know, when they need to get on the ball. When I saw, again, I've seen some some guys saw a kid uh, in, a, in a state game, you know, a couple of years ago that knelt on a ball on like the two yard line instead of letting it go in the end zone. Things like that that happen. You know, special teams are a great equalizer. I think you know you re I've seen some really good football teams, you know, come out on the wrong end, end of the stick. Okay, when, they, when, when, when their special teams break down. I was fortunate at Lewiston. 
Okay, I can remember really one game that was we we directly lost because our special teams were awful. Okay, but I also can remember six or seven games that we, we took advantage of our special teams and made made a big difference. Made something many a couple of times we were not as good as our opponent, and it was no different at Bates. Okay, we had there were a number of games that we we either kept it really close, stayed competitive for four quarters, uh, won a game. I remember going down to Amherst, and Amherst is traditional power. It was seven to six with a minute to go at Amherst. Okay, why? Because our punt had a great day. We caused a fumble on a punt return. Uh, uh, all a number of different things that went our way, and we were able to change field position a lot. We we're very very solid on special teams. They weren't, and we ended up losing the game by a touchdown. But bottom line, we were right there at the end, and, and without those things, we, they, they were much better than we were. Okay, we're talking, we're talking about just a stance and alignment real quick. I'm going to just go through this a little bit more. Okay, well, we're all obviously all in a two-point stance. Front five, again, I think just some things you want to emphasize for those guys up front. Now, we're never aligned directly opposite the ball. See the ball off the tee. Now, again, make sure that you, as, you, as you initially take your drop and you're aligned correctly, you see the ball kicked. How many times? Have you seen, in coach, you guys all do a great job of scouting. Those kids are going to turn their back. All of a sudden, now you get a little squib kick, and the kid doesn't see it. And now, all of a sudden, they, they, they're able to change momentum by recovering an onside kick. So it's really important that you do that. Tight ends and fullbacks, again, you need to make sure they're catching the ball. Okay, make sure they, they understand the rules. Go from there. See if I can get this thing to move. See my techno nerdness. It's pretty good, coach. Doing all right? Okay. <laughs> Again, coaching points for our returners, catch the football. I, that was my, as I'm walking around, catch the ball. Uh, again, during, during that specialist block, another thing that I would do with those front five, too deep, is to walk through their assignments for the week. Okay, you give them that, a few extra minutes to work on some of that stuff. Uh, understand, understand the scheme of the return. You know, there's no different, there's no different than an offensive, it's an offensive play. You know, where, where, where are you trying to hit the crease? Where are the blocks? At? There's a return scene. You need to understand that. Our fullbacks need to understand that. Okay, really, really important. Okay? We have, if, if have, you need to have some calls if the ball, to, to recognize if, if the ball is kicked short. You know, it's a squib kick. It's, it's outside the hash mark. And, you know, in high school, you get a bunch of those. So the guys up front need to know that. What we would do is if we got a short, short call, we would immediately come off our blocks and go attack our guy aggressively right now and just make, make do on, on, on what was going to happen, okay? Uh, obviously, get upfield quickly, hit the crease, uh, protect the football, no turnovers, really, really important. Okay, I'm going to go through and just, one of the things that, that, that I tried, we had basically two returns when I was at Lewiston. We had basically an isolation return. We're blocking out of the point of attack, isolate one defender, we had the ability to, 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 uh, to isolate any one of three guys based on, again, no different as an offensive concept. We always try to find the fish. We want to try to get one guy fired. There's got to be someone in the front ten that's not very good. That's the guy we're going to go after. So one week it might be number five, it might be number four, it might be number three. We would adjust our return accordingly. So it gave us a little bit of flexibility, but the basic concept was still the same. You know, it really changed the assignment for maybe one guy. I think that's important. The backside of both of our returns was identical. So if we were running a middle return to the right or a outside return to the right, the backside, the assignments and scheme was exactly the same. Now, they may have to adjust their drops a little bit, but it was all the same. Okay? Pretty simple. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to hold this right now. Coach, put me on the board. Yeah, I can. Right. Fellas, what I want to do now, I got a little bit ahead of myself. I got a little, little topsy turvy with uh, forgetting something at home. I'm going to go through some. Talk to that camera window. Talk to that one right there. Okay, I'm all messed up. We're going to talk about some of, our, some of our core drills. There were four drills that we used throughout the course of every week, at least once a week. And, and, and just want to talk about those real quick. Okay, one is just a, just a, just a blocking and space drill. Here's, here's the offensive player. A defensive player, and this this is the blocker. Okay, this is this is in a short space. It's probably four or five yards apart. He would just drop on his angle. Defender would come down. We're going to buzz our feet. We're going to make our block. Okay, just again, just just to, just to go over and over that. Okay, sometimes we make it a little more stressful. 
would put the defender right there. So now he's got to get back with a sense of urgency and turn him and flip his hips, get on a good angle, and strike a blow. So that was one. We would do uh, obviously a, a very simple overfield tackling drill, run at each other, start to make a cut, and then break down. So we go here, and make a 45 degree cut, settle our feet down, okay, and just, just fit in. We wouldn't actually tackle, but just get them the idea. That again, you got some, again, we've got guys covering punts that may be receivers, that may be running backs. And our, when I was at Bates, we didn't tackle with those kids. If they were tackling, something bad was happening. Okay? So we, so we had the same thing off for the defensive guys. They had to be able to block. And okay? we did an evade drill. We'd have guys lined up from the sideline to the hash mark, defender, and uh, all they would do, they'd, be, they'd just be jogging. Yeah, it would just they would just alternate, they alternate their, their, their reduction. I blew the whistle. They would under rip and stay right on their line. And what I would try to do is, is use a use this use a, 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 a yard line. So say this is the 50 yard line with a defender. There's the hash mark. Run right there. And stay have to stay right on the line. Okay. And again, what we what we're teaching is on the whistle having to reduce their pads and avoid a defender. At times, we'd only do it once. And I would put a, uh, uh, a little rag or, or a penny on the ground. They'd have to actually reach down and grab the penny and stay on their line. Again, what are you teaching? Teaching being able to avoid a, avoid a defender and be able to get back, on, get back on your line. And again, you're only talking about maybe about a 15-yard run. So that made it really, really good. All right? Okay, those are the things that we did as far as our core drills. We do those every single day. Uh, maybe two of them. And honestly, my first special teams practice at Bates, the first 10-minute block, we, we would actually just do what we introduce our core drills. Which would sac we wouldn't we wouldn't go schematics. It was just special teams drills. Another thought that you might want to think about in terms of um, installation. I believe the two most complicated, important special teams are Kick, kickoff return and punt. Okay, obviously kickoff return because of the timing, like any other offensive play, and punt because I said earlier you're talking about going from offense to defense. You got to be able to protect the punter, and then you all of a sudden you got to transition and being able to cover. Okay, so why we would literally, after we got our, our core drills done, the next day we would install punt and we would take 20 minutes. The first half of practice, or the first 10-minute block would be punt. The second 10-minute block would be punt. The next day, we'd do kickoff return. First half would be kickoff return. Second half would be kickoff return. Take that extra time to really pound it home. And you still had time during the week. Now, again, at the high school level, we only, you only have 10 practices. It's, it's a little, you still fit it in. But I think that's really, really important. I felt it helped our kickoff return, helped our punt return. Excuse me, our kickoff return and our punt game. And although, again, those are really, really critical. And you got to make some decisions about where you're going you to save some time. All right? I talked a little bit earlier. I'm going to show you a couple of drills just to talk specifically about our punt team before I get back to kickoff return. A couple of things help help save the kids' legs. When we get into, we get into our, our punt period, we never, the whole time I was at base and when I was at Lewiston, we never full field covered a punt in practice, ever. Okay, think about it. Does, does it make any sense? You, you, you kids are doing enough as it is, and they're going to have them sprint 40 yards downfield five or six or seven times. I mean, what are their legs going to be like? You do that one day, maybe. What's it going to be like at the end of the season? You can get the same thing out of breaking it down. We would have our punt team. Okay, with our, with our PP. And we would put cones down or flat cones, whatever you want to call them, on our guys' landmarks. And our landmarks at base didn't change whether we were on a hash, middle, or hash. They knew exactly what they were supposed to be. So we would work our release drill by just, we'd work our sets first. Okay, and then we'd work exit angles and go to our, and go to our cones. And I don't have them exactly where they're supposed to be. Okay, 15 yards, they'd buzz their feet. Back, second group would go. That was, so again, they're going 15, you haven't even got to go 50, you can go 10 yards if you want them. Our rule of thumb was at 15 yards, you, have, you want to be at your landmark as far as fanning the field. Okay? 
get him in a good athletic position, jog him off, do it again. And we did this on air. We didn't do it without protection. Not, you, know, we, you can, but we didn't at first. Then what we would do, I'll just turn this sucker around. Here's your returner. Okay, and again, you got about 15 yards. Guys are on, guys are on their landmarks. You got your coach who's going to throw the ball. Throw a punt here. As the ball's in the air, you blow the whistle. So you time it up. So now these guys start to come down. Again, they were always taught to keep the ball on their inside pad. Okay? As they get close to the returner, they squeeze, keeping their shoulders square. Because you know what happened. Once I turn my shoulders and he breaks, I'm beat. So it's, and we're just going to squeeze and we're going to tag off. As the returner goes, you can put two returners back there and work a reverse, whatever you want to do. But again, it saves their legs. All right? Other little things we did on our punt team. Okay? We, we, put a, we put a stand up dummy. These are one of our, we were a sprint team. We put, put our gunners right there, 15, 16, 15, and 20 yards away. We would have, we'd, 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 we'd simulate a kick, and this kid would sprint down and tackle the bag. One of the things we told our gunners if you are the first man down, you are going to take a shot. I don't care if you miss, you're going to take a shot and make that returner stop his feet. And we're always, and again, you got to be smart. You got to take a shot at the big field side thigh board. Why? Where's the returner going to have to go? Into the boundary. Just like on defense, use the the use the use the, um, the boundary as your 12 guy. Okay, really important. We, we we work on that one. That was always really important. But take a shot. Have some fun. All right. Really really good stuff. Other drills. Uh, we would work out again. We would work our blue punt. Again, same deal. Punter, gunner, gunner, returner. This is the same. This is the 40-yard line going in. Okay, we want to keep the ball out of the end zone. Okay, we have these guys cover for their 15 yards. So they're not, they're not, they're not killing themselves. The punt, this is this is the short field. This is the hash mark. He's going directly behind. He, he's watching the ball. We're eliminating him from, from the coverage. And he's going to watch the ball, and he's going to work to get to the five-yard line, turn his back, and face the punter. Keep that ball out of the end zone. We were also, I, I also believe firmly in being a directional kick team. So if we're on a hash mark, our punters were told that the ball, if the ball goes outside the hash, start running. We want to go from the hash to the numbers. I have no idea why now at the major college level and the professional level they don't do that anymore. They try this funky drop where the ball goes up and it's supposed to, it's supposed to bounce everything and it never does. How many punts do you see go into the end zone on a Sunday? Quite a few as far as I know. Okay, same thing, same thing at the major college level. We're going to directional punt it. I would rather have the ball go out of bounds on the 20 yard line with no return. Same thing, if they've, got a, if they've got a dynamic returner, we are not going to kick him the ball. Period, end of story. Williams had, a, had an All-American punt and kickoff return guy when I was especially his coordinator. In two games, he had 10 yards in returns. 10. Number one, we didn't kick him the ball. And when we punted it, we put it on the guy down the sideline. So a couple of times he did get it, he didn't go very far. So again, why, if you've got an Anthony Bracken on him, or whatever, I've seen some, some dudes back there. Why do you want to kick him the football? Kick it 25 yards, and let's play defense. And instead of giving him the ball in all this space, and he, he you know, just, no. That, I don't understand why guys do that. We never did. In the time that I was in time that I was at Lewiston, we had one punt return for a touchdown, no kickoff returns in 14 years. That has a good kids, absolutely. But I think it was the mentality of, we're not going to kick you the ball. We're going to make somebody else beat us. And this is one time, sometimes you can't always do that, you know, on, 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 as a defense. They'll find a way to get their best play of the ball. Well, if you don't kick it to him, he can't get it. So you have a lot of control over that as you go. But we work on that, on that drill quite a bit. It really, really helped us. There were you know, a number of different times where we were able to uh, keep the ball out of the end zone. Uh, there was one year, I believe, we had... 19 punts that were down inside the 20, which is about 15 to 18% of our opponent's total drives, and they never scored any one of those. So you figure out that from a statistical standpoint, that really helps our defense. 
the longer they have to go. Change field position. Okay? I'll go back to our kickoff return just for a second. Okay, get, Coach, you get that up there? I do. Can you? Whatever you've got on the screen is oh, that's it. Okay, cool. Okay, guys, we're going to go kickoff. Just review why kickoff return. Okay, we're going to keep it really simple. The bat, real, real, uh, with our crease return, basically we're going to try to hit it up up, up the, the top of the numbers. Okay, we're, we're going to kick out number two and three. Okay, and uh, so pin number two, number three, and number four. We're going to trap use our inside guy and kick out number number two, and we're going to hit, hit the out. Okay, we're going to make it look exactly like our, our ambush return, which is our middle return, which I'll get to in just a second. Baby, what are you doing here? Help me out. Here we go. Here we go. You look, you look, at, you look at ambush left. Get up on the screen. You can see we're kicking out two and three on both sides. So, again, we're working ambush right, ambush left. For those guys, it's the same, it's the same goddamn play. In this case, we're, we're, we're using our, our end. To kick to, to, to pin number five, and we're going to isolate number four. We we could have, we could isolate four. We could isolate three. Change up based on who the fish was. I think that's really really important to do. Okay, but again, that that was all we did. If we went into a game with one or the other, okay, very rarely did we have. Did we we, we might have had a crease as a backup, but when we knew we're going in, we were really going to be a sideline return team or we're going to be a middle return. Period in the story. And that was based on a scouting report, that was based on watching film, those types of things. But that never changed in the five years that I was coaching the special teams at Bates. Okay, got to keep it simple over and over again. I think the core drills help, organization helps, having, having depth charts, being on top of it so the kids know when they go out, you're not wasting any time. I don't know about you, but you, know, you only got a couple hours of practice. If you go a lot more than that, I think it's a waste of time. Okay, guys? And that's what I got. Hopefully you guys learned some things. Uh, if you want anything more schematically, uh, here's my, I don't know if you can see this or not. I can zoom in on it a little bit, Coach. Pigskin Inc. at AOL.com. If, if I, I'm on Twitter, it's about the only thing technolog technologically wise I can do. Uh, direct message me. Uh, if you want to talk more in depth of what I, what we're doing, uh, what I what I have done, uh, I pretty much run it all defensively and offensively. More than welcome to, to chat. Love to talk talk football. I know right now we can't get together face to face, but give me a give me a phone call. Coach Hath has got my got my cell number. Uh, I'll be more than happy to do anything you can. And let's just keep this thing rolling. Okay, we got a lot of good things going on in the state. One thing I want to leave you with. Okay, we are a brotherhood. Okay, it's it's more than just your program. We have to be, be able to help each other. Because if you're not helping your opponents, there may be a, there may be a day you don't have any opponents. Okay? And I, I, don't, I don't want that to happen. We've got to, keep, we've got to keep this thing going in the right direction. Whether it's eight men, whether it's 11 men, whether it's youth, uh, keep, keep flying around. And the last thing I say, it brought, brought some memories back, watching the Lobster Bowls of the last three or four nights and seeing, seeing some, some really, really legendary coaches having taken part in that game. If you're a high school coach, before you get done, you need to spend a week up in Dover Foxcroft right now and have some fun. It's this experience you're never gonna, never gonna forget. It's a, and it, bottom line, it's a great cause. Coach Hathaway, thank you. Yeah. Had a blast. Awesome. Thank we'll do you. it again. I'll uh, give some just some closing comments here. Um, you know, uh, number one, I, I think just to follow up on a couple of the good points that, that Coach made, I think we've all used probably the term before uh, iron sharpens iron. And it's not really just a term for players. I think it's also a term for coaches. Uh, because if we're not educating each other and, and making each other better, um, you know, then, then we're not going to become better ourselves. And I know that you know, every time I go up against somebody who brings something different or something new or something better, um, you know, anytime we go up against a staff that, that is really prepared or whatever, it makes us better as coaches. And, and I really appreciate that. And uh, that's part of the impetus for this kind of project that we're doing is, uh, you know, we want to make Maine football as, as good as it can be. Uh, so if we can coach our coaches up, uh, that, that's a great thing. And then the other point on, on the lobster bowl, uh, you know, if you're a young guy out there just getting into this thing and you're an assistant coach or, or whatever, I remember when I was an assistant at Oak Hill, uh, you know, hanging out with Jason Fuller one weekend, kind of begging me to, or begging him to get me on a lobster bowl staff uh, so that I could experience that and, and get together with some other coaches and, I remember the very first one I did was on the West, and uh, I believe John Morin was the uh, 
the head coach that year, uh, Otash and Porter were the quarterbacks. And, uh, you know, I was coaching backers on a defensive staff with uh, John Suddy, Kevin Cooper, and, and Kevin Kiesel. And uh, you want to talk about some dudes that you can, you can learn some things from. Uh, and then over the years, just different guys that I worked with and, and for in, in those games. Um, you know, it was just an awesome experience. I'm going to get to call the plays uh, this year in the Lobster Bowl. I've been away from it for a couple of years, so uh, excited to be back. Uh, doing that, excited to work with Coach Green and Coach Cates, um, you know, on the offensive side of the ball uh, this summer. Um, so uh, it's it's a pretty cool thing. So if you get that opportunity, uh, you know, make the most of it. Uh, we'll, we'll certainly, uh, uh, you know, pump that up as, as we get a little bit closer. But, uh, yeah, that closes today's segment. Uh, tomorrow I think it's going to be me uh, finishing up session two of the pass game. Got a lot of film uh, and a lot of cut-ups to show you guys on some stuff that we talked about last week on Friday. Uh, getting Coach Norwich. Uh, we're going to try Zoom for the first time uh, on this show on Thursday. And Coach Norwich is going to Zoom in and talk about uh, uh, the recruiting process. Might even get Coach Capone if, he, if, we, can, uh, if we can get him Zoomed in. Uh, might get him or maybe even just get him back in the studio. Uh, Wednesday is still a little up in the air. Uh, hoping to secure somebody from my staff to come in and, and talk specifically about uh, some position-specific uh, drills maybe. Uh, but we'll, we'll kind of we'll noodle some ideas and, and try to solidify that and let you know tomorrow. So that's today, fellas. Uh, peace out. We'll see you tomorrow at noon. <clears throat> Still alive. <laughs> uh, close that. Stop recording.